Hello, my dear students. So in this video, I will give you an example of the type of defense video which you are going to, to do, okay? So take note that this is an example of your research uh, video presentation, which you're going to submit to me as part of your requirements in your class, in your research classes, okay? So let's start with the title. So what I will be showing you is exactly how are you going to do it? including how you were able to do your PowerPoint presentations, okay? So first, start with your title and write your name as a presenter, okay? So let's start. Today, I will talk about my research presentation for my study entitled Verbal Forms of Bullying Among Intermediate Pupils in Selected Schools in Ocampo District, Ocampo Camarines Sur. Okay, some words have the potential to make people feel as if they do not have a worthwhile place in the society. And this is according to Flynn, 2010. According to Grady, 2012, verbal bullying is the use of words to attack or injure an individual. Verbal bullying had adverse effects on students' performance and self-regard, and it creates an environment of hostility in schools. This is according to Jovanin, Wang, and Espinoza, 2011, and Phillips and Corning, 2012. The Department of Education reported that 80% of cases involved acts of bullying during the school year 2012 to 2013 to 2013 to 2014. This report is according to Malipo 2013 and Flores 2014. The students take drastic measures to make the pain stop. Unfortunately, Many of these measures resulted to suicide, like a 15-year-old Staten Island Jude who died carrying a note that her classmates or classmates constantly teased her. This is from Asian Journal 2013. A Filipino bully from Sambuangas committed suicide after being bullied by his own victim. This is according to Philippine Trend 2014. Now, this study sought answers to the following questions. First, what words are used in verbal bullying? Second, what are the most and least prominent forms of verbal bullying among the respondent schools? Third, what structural patterns are observed in language of verbal bullying? Fourth, to what extent does verbal bullying occur in the respondent schools? And fifth, what are the most common places, time, or situations when verbal bullying takes place? Okay. This study used the mixed methodology design. It utilized both quantitative and qualitative data. The respondents of this study were 324 intermediate pupils enrolled in the school year 2015 to 2016 in the selected schools in Ocampo District that were purposefully chosen. This study utilized the instruments descriptive survey, interview, and focused group discussion. The survey questionnaire was validated by experts and underwent pilot testing. The research procedure follows four, four phases, which are preparatory stage, implementation stage, analysis and interpretation, and writing of the manuscript. 
and it uses statistical tools like frequency and ordinal rank, average and percentage. Okay, based on the results and findings, the Beagle words used in verbal bullying were identified and classified according to bad words, demeaning words or humiliating words related to poverty, ironic words, sexually suggestive language, teasing words, threatening words, words used in gossiping, and new names that originate from one's name used, which is name calling. Okay. So these are the results of the study. So the classifications of words used in verbal in verbal bullying are we have bad words, demeaning language related to poverty, humiliating words, ironic words, sexually abusive language, teasing words, and these examples of beacle words under these are located in the second column. And the English translations are also given, okay? So let's continue. Under threading words, gossiping and name calling, these are the beacle words used by children in verbal bullying, okay? For example, threatening words, babagtakan taka, pupunitihon taka, masusuntok taka, titigbakon taka, and so on. And as you can see, the English translations are given in the third column. Okay? So what now? Based on the result, teasing is the first in rank in school A and C, while name calling is the first in rank in school B. Among the three respondent schools, teasing rank first with a frequency of 275, 271, followed by name calling with a frequency of 256, which is second in rank. Okay, so this shows here in the table the frequency and rank for school A, school B, and school C. So as you can see, teasing ranked first in school A and it ranked second in school B, in school B rather, but it ranks first also in school C, followed by name calling, which ranks third in school A and ranks first in school B and ranks second in school C, okay? Certain beacon words used by children in verbal bullying were observed to have structural patterns. These are noun to adjective, noun to verb, prefix, like the prefix ma, ma to verb, first syllable of a verb and a verb future action, prefix ma, and first syllable of a noun to future action, and name and suffix to new name, changing syllables of a name to create new name, changing the first letter of a name to make new name, and other linguistic patterns like a word, then taka, then noun to description, then ka, okay? Like these are the structural patterns involved and observed. Noun to adjective, so its functions was from a noun, it becomes a description, so it becomes an adjective like galo. Then the morpheme, prefix or suffix, plus on means, in Bicol, it's galoon, which means it's a plague and tartar on the teeth. Okay? Another, mota, that's the base word, mota, mota. Then the morpheme, which is a prefix or suffix, on plus on, mota on. It's a cross tough in around the eye. Then you also have your other patterns used like noun to verb, prefix ma, and noun to verb, first syllable of a verb, and verb to future action. 
All right. Then prefix ma and first syllable of a noun and noun to future action. Like this one. Make a noun a verb denoting a specific action in the future. For example, sapak plus sapak, then the use of morpheme or prefix ma plus the first syllable of a word sa, masasapa, meaning it's hit in the face. Then si pa, masisipa, kick, ma, titigbak, ma titigbak means kill, all right? Okay, I have here another results also for another structural pattern observed. We have the prefix mind for syllable of a verb and noun. To future action, it functions like the change in the time of expression to the known future action. Also name and suffix to new name to make new name to call a person and changing syllables in a name to create a new name to make new name or to call a, a person. Actually, these are examples. Like the name of the person and then adding suffix like pot becomes shena pot. So they use this for name calling shena pot. Okay. Ken thought. Miguelito and so on. Okay. So these are the words that were used by the children to use in bullying. Okay. 38.89 of the pupil respondents claimed that they always experience verbal bullying and 24.69% of them often. So on the contrary, only 10.9% seldom or just once a week experience verbal bullying. Okay, so this shows the extent of verbal bullying seldom. Occasionally, often, and always. As you can see, 38.89% of the respondents claim that they always experience verbal bullying. So verbal bullying took place in eight places like inside the school. And among these places, results show that 37.96% of verbal bullying happened inside the classroom during recess. Next is at the porch with 22.53%. On the other hand, only 0.93 of the pupil respondents claim that bullying happened in school or covered court and 2.47% in the comfort room. So as to the time or situation when verbal bullying occurred, it can be noted that 23.77% happened during recess and 22.53 after class. On the other hand, only 3.70% verbal bullying occurred during group activity and 7.10% before the flag ceremony. Okay, so this is the table that shows the results and the statistical analysis of the result, okay? So let's continue. As a conclusion, there are many words that offend, irritate, hurt, anger, displease, threaten, harm, injure, and attack children during the verbal bullying situations. There are bad words, demeaning words, or humiliating words related to poverty, gossiping, saying ironic words, sexually abusive words, teasing, threatening words, and name calling. So as a recommendation, integrate vehicle terms in language discussion for the pupils to be familiar and understand its meaning to avoid words that are tantamount to bullying. Make posters of kind words, Organize HPTA homeroom organization, fostering the proper use of language in school, at home, and in the community. The most prominent form of verbal bullying in this study, whose respondents are elementary pupils, is teasing. 
on the other hand, the list is saying demeaning words or humiliating language related to poverty. So as a, as a result, make a strategic plan to let the pupils avoid teasing and other forms of bullying, such as having a policy that's similar to no offensive words policy, no to verbal bullying, okay? So through this, it will neutralize offensive language used by bullies. Then changing a noun to adjective, changing a vehicle noun to verb, changing a verb to denote a specific action in the future, and making new names out of one's name, such as adding a suffix to a name and changing the first letter of a name pattern. Now, my recommendation in this conclusion is that similar studies be conducted, focusing on special languages such as bullying to discover, to understand, and to appreciate more Bika language. Also, high percentage of pupils experience verbal bullying to a great extent. On the contrary, only small percentage seldom experience verbal bullying to a low extent. Therefore, schools must have anti-bullying programs and strict implementation of RA 10627 or the Anti-Bullying Act of 2013. And among the places and time in school where verbal bullying were identified to have happened, the most common was inside the classroom or during recess. This was followed at the porch after class. So as a recommendation, assign lookouts or watchers in places and if incidents occurred, report it immediately to the teacher's concern. Also, it would help to post posters about anti-bullying. Okay, that's it for now. Goodbye.